Hi there, welcome back to the dojo. I am Russ Leach, I'm the comic book black belt. And this is one of a series of videos where I'm going to talk about this book, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way. Um, there are lots of books out there that uh, profess to be able to teach you how to draw comics and a lot of them are really good. Um, but this is the daddy, this is the book. If you've got one book to teach you how to draw comics or to, to help you how to draw comics, this is the one you should have. Um, it's it's not perfect, but, but it is very, very close. It also has uh, one of the finest artists ever to grace comics, John Buscema drawing within its pages uh, and Stanley writing the book. Now, um, I was very fortunate to be involved in Draw the Marvel Way which is uh, similar in, in its approach. Um, I put in there my hints, tips, tutorials of, of how to draw the Marvel characters. I've, I've been blessed with being able to draw a ton of Marvel characters for Marvel within these pages. And it was a hundred issues over just over four years. There were some other extremely talented people involved in the book. And it really is a good book in my personal opinion, but it still has not got a patch on this one. So what this series of videos is, is me effectively going through all the sections, all the lessons, all the, the chapters of this book, giving you some examples of my artwork that I feel ha that I've uh, improved or I've uh, benefited from this book and how that works for me. Um, and in the chapters where you draw along, I'll be doing some drawings and hopefully you can draw along with me. And Hopefully it'll be of some use to everyone out there. And if nothing else, it'll be an advert for you to go out and buy this book. I'm using a PDF that I got from uh, an educational download. I will put the link to that PDF in the description for each video in the series, but I, I can't instill enough in you. Go and buy this book and put it on your desk because it's an absolute must have. So without further ado, I'll get on with this episode. Right, so chapter eight, um, this is uh, drawing the human head. Um, just look at that. What a fantastic drawing that is by John Boosmer. Um, there's, there's so much drama in, in that. It's uh, it's incredible, but I, I use that word drama a lot. I use energy, uh, the word energy a lot. Um, gravity, gravitas, like all these things that John Boosmer would bring to the art, um, but also so many of the, the Bronze Age artists, they would bring a real uh, sense of, um, it's that, that, that whole thing about comic book art, uh, you know, suspending that sense of disbelief and, and really dragging you in. Um, and, and all of the art from that period of time was just fantastic. So getting on with it, uh, this chapter drawing the human head or even the inhuman head we're not prejudiced <laughs> i love stan he was just so, so great so most everyone you see the the basics of of planning out a, a, a head there most everyone can draw faces and heads of some sort even if the head is just a simple circle with two dots for eyes and straight line for mouth sometimes if you omit the nose in such a sketch no one will even miss it however the time hath come for us to study heads drawn in the Marvel manner. And since we have to begin somewhere, let's examine the sketches on these pages. Notice that the head drawn in the profile should generally fit into a square as shown with the nose and part of the chin protruding. Also note that the eyes usually come midway down the skull. This is, this is all stuff that you will find in so many different books. Okay, so many different how-to books. And there are lots of uh, great ones out there. Uh, the Hogarth ones are particularly good. Um, this is a really neat thing here. Keep those drawing, keep these drawings which depict the skull in different angles and use them as guides for the exercises that follow. So what they're doing here is they're just taking the very basics and and putting them in different positions so that you understand the, the base geometric structures of a head so that when you put that onto your body or into a panel, whatever it might be, it's believable. It makes work. It, it, it fools the eye into thinking, yes, that, that works. Uh, anatomically. For starters, let's draw a typical hero type head. Oh. Since everything is easier when you've got a few rules to follow, here are some tips. The head is generally five eyes wide. That's interesting stuff. So it's, uh, uh, the, you see that the way that it's uh, done that on Johnny Storm, it looks like Johnny Storm's face. It could be Johnny Storm, it could be Doc Savage, it could be so many of these people. Um, 
but it looks very Johnny Storm. Although, um, in in typical uh, manner, it's it's it, it, to the right side of the head. Um, it's starting to get thinner. That's something you do uh, as an artist quite often. Is is you lean to one side or the other. That's why it's so important uh, to use a mirror uh, if you're drawing your uh, you you actually drawing on paper. Put your artwork up to a mirror and it's amazing what you'll pick out the things that make it look a little bit odd that you can't see because you're the artist and you're so in, involved so engaged with the work uh digitally it's just great you can just flip it and go ah oh, right okay i've drawn that eye too too uh small or, or that side of the face too wide um you don't want perfect faces yeah that's something that i that i uh was in error I used to try and do that so often I, I was drawn into that whole thing of trying to make everything symmetrical you don't want symmetry because it that will rock the eye as well because it's very rare that you get symmetry in real life and so the brain doesn't want to see it however symmetry is beautiful uh, that's that that's the way of the of the human mind um, you, you're looking for that perfection so it's worth checking backwards and forwards, like I say, in the mirror or flipping your uh, your layer. Um, but don't be obsessed by it. Don't try and, and flip everything so that it's exactly symmetrical, because uh, it, it's not gonna it's not gonna please the reader. It's not gonna please the viewer. Uh, the head is generally five eyes wide. There is one eye's distance between two eyes to determine the width of the mouth. Draw an equilateral triangle starting at the top bridge of the nose. The triangle goes down, touching the nostrils. Blah blah. blah. Simply start your triangle underneath the nose through the lower lip where it starts to turn up. Uh, so you can see all these things here. I'm reading them out, but you can see them because this is a YouTube video. Uh, you can see them for yourself. Keep the mouth simple. Notice the curve of the upper lip and just a small, simple line for the lower lip. So you're literally just picking out the, the little shadow underneath the lip. There are, of course, thousands of vari variations on these little rules. However, remembering these basic principles will make it easier to draw the many different types of faces that await us. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Here we have some uh, examples. As you can see, there are many different types of good looking males. Well, that's, that's an opinion, isn't it? Be they human, amphibian or whatever. However, the important point it to remember is if you generally follow the rules we've given you, you'll be able to make any character heroic looking, no matter what his origin or facial expression. And this is where we depart from just a basic, or just basic, just a, a an art how-to book, how to draw people into Marvel, or at least old Marvel, uh, Bronze Age, uh, comic book design, comic book art, comic book creation. And to have this heroic square-jawed character to you know to go into those uh, cliche stereotypes if you like but it's uh it's a kind of it's a it's a kind of way of pro uh, reproducing um the human form but doing it in a in an accentuated way specifically for this sort of um americana comic art form it, it is something in and of itself and i think um I think sometimes it gets missed in in modern comics to be honest with you there's something great about about the way that things were done in the bronze age this is a personal opinion of course and something that i try to add into my own artwork is that it it's got a kind of a realistic bent as in you can see you know but people don't have bendy arms like they do in in disney you know mickey mouse cartoons for instance or um uh or, or like the old Looney Tunes and that kind of stuff. You know, there's definite there's definite anatomy, there's definite realism from that perspective. But it's it's the presentation, the way that it's inked, the way that it's it's shown. It's like it's not trying to recreate real life. It's it's a representation of the world around us to make it believable enough so that you can stuff in as many fantastical elements as possible. So that when you start to draw too realistically, personally, I think it brings you out of that state of disbelief where you can just immerse yourself in a comic book story. So um, that's why I, I, I bat for, for 
for Bronze Age art more so than modern art. Uh, there are some fantastic artists out there, but like I say, something that I'm trying to do with my art and that fits in totally with, with uh, Draw the Marvel way and, and the old Bronze Age uh, approach is that I'm trying, trying to create worlds and stories and environments and characters that are extremes to some degree, that are cliche in some ways, but are fun and aren't trying to be too real. Um, and, and I think that's something that, that comes across, especially in this chapter, when you look at the faces, as, and especially John Boosman's work, uh, and the way that they are, they have real characteristics, but they're all accentuated, and, and that makes it just that much more fun. So drawing the good guy is, as you can probably tell, a somewhat formalized task, but drawing the bad guy, ah, that's where the fun is. That's where you can let your imagination run riot and really do your thing. As you know, your average vile and vicious villain comes in all sizes, shapes and categories. So when creating his head, her head, you can use any shape that grabs you. Square, round, narrow, whatever. There are strong ones, sly ones, nutty ones, paranoid ones. There goes on and on and on. So if you'll courageously turn the page, we'll give you a selection of sample types. There you go. There's, there's some obviously villainous types on this page. And, you know, you've got like the thug there, you've got like the, the caveman alien type professor, uh, demon, you know, maybe some kind of old guy. Uh, you, you've got like a almost a boss or a hitman at the top there. Um, the arch fiend, a bit joker like. But you look at the way, I, I don't know how well the video is reproducing this, but we'll just zoom in there a little bit. But you've got these... Um, shapes different shapes for heads here and and you can just apply what you need to apply to that i did something a little while ago there's that storm chasers thing um where i did some heads myself I, I put a video up about it actually and it's literally just drawing heads from shapes uh and coming up with different um different characteristics so let, let's do something uh right now i'll do something really quick i'll do it in pen um so that you can see it well on the screen. Let's just draw a shape. Let's just draw a shape there. And what we'll do is we'll put the eyes high. So where we're talking about drawing the head and you have a particular set of rules like eyes halfway down, uh, where the nose is, where the mouth is, all that kind of stuff. Once you know those things, then you can start, then you can start uh, playing with them. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, put an eye in there. And I'm going to put a big eye there because he's this this guy's crazy, okay. And it's I think I'll make him a villain. I'll put the put those in there, and then I'll, we'll give him a big wide nose. Now yeah, I'm probably squinting my eyes right now, and you can watch it. <laughs> there we go, and some lips there. Let's give him some some uh, nasty teeth there so and it's this is lip so there's that line underneath his lip that they were talking about that uh, Stan was talking about earlier some uh, and then uh, let's 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 give him a nice high forehead and, uh, and some wacky big ears. So really, you know, uh, it, it, you've just got to play with concepts. You've got to play with shapes, play with concepts, and it, it really is as straightforward as, as, as that once you've got your practice in you can do this kind of stuff i mean this this is not the best in the world it's just a, a quick face but it's you've got to let yourself go um don't be too uh don't be too married to the rules and we were talking about a how-to book here we're talking about finding out about the rule set about how to make things work um but then you know once once you've got that programmed in you, then you've got to let yourself go Otherwise, you know, where does the creativity come from? Don't restrict yourself too much. 
okay let yourself come up with some of these things and they're not all going to be great you know some of the ideas aren't going to be brilliant and some of them are going to be fantastic let's i'll tell you what we'll do let's um let's flip this and see just how much uh that's what see look at that so that's that's kind of weird on the left hand side because i'm a right-handed artist uh not one of the 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 good artists who are all left-handed <laughs> um but yeah so you can see there's little bits and pieces that i can pick out that weren't quite right or weren't quite in the right place visually when when i was drawing from that way round, and it's just you can just by flipping or by looking in the mirror at your artwork you can just pick out those things that might just be just that little bit annoying to the eye so if it, so that that hair should have come further that way further back that way here yeah, looking at it a bit kind of if I edit transform oops sorry edit transform it transform flip horizontal so there we are we're back in it there so it's a crazy face um just off the back of shapes and, and these are some some more that i've done okay so that that process that that john boosmer had gone through there that's for everyone it you just like i mean you can see just how slick his style is and how he's got to a point where everything just works so well i mean just the, the 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 flicks for the cheek on that thug there the the side of the of the mouth here on the on the more uh, bestial one the big head at the top and those ears are great so he's he's got lots of uh skills in his toolbox and and it's that learning the rules then practicing them breaking them practicing them breaking them practicing them breaking them and that whole process and, and practice and practice and practice is just constant and the more you do it the more you come up with your own little shortcuts of how you'll make a mouth or a nose or whatever and there's uh, some beautiful uh, inking here uh there's some curvy work there as well i think in there uh, now we come to almost fav everyone's favourite part: drawing the face of a pretty girl. Uh, so um, obviously this is this is ancient stuff. So uh, yeah, not all men are be men are gorgeous and handsome, and not all women are pretty and beautiful, according to these uh, predetermined standards. Um, there's so many different ways of looking at this, but uh, but but we'll put that to one side, and uh, we'll will go in the spirit of, of how this was uh, how this was written not only is john one of the all-time greats in the field of superhero strips but is all, all he is almost without peer when it comes to portraying beauty portraying beautiful females and that is true and if you need any further proof read on we're going to devote quite a lot of space to this section because the semblance of a beautiful heroine is usually more difficult to produce than drawing of a hero i don't know why that is maybe it is different for girls when they draw maybe they find it harder to draw men than to draw women maybe it's a a resemblance thing i don't know but i know that it is more difficult to draw women for me than it is to draw men again some absolutely fantastic tips here wonderful wonderful um rule set that you can use as a basis for drawing uh, place the mouth well forward from the skull notice the lower lip is fuller than the upper lip while the upper lip juts out farther forward see the angle john drew place the eyebrow but not too low and employ a graceful curve bring chin forward and find proper positioning of nostril by drawing a straight line from mouth to eye line notice that the forehead is always rounded and never flat so these are curves it's it's, it's a curvy um gentle look to to the to the fem to the feminine uh face to the female figure tell you what we'll operate an honor system john and i will take your word for the fact that you've been faithfully practicing drawing with the female profile we'll assume that you've got that down pat so draw a well-positioned egg this is for the front facing draw a well-positioned egg shape draw the usual eye midway up draw an equilateral triangle about one third of the way down from the top of the lip and the eye indicate the nose line indicate the nose 
Add graceful eyebrows well above the eyes and sketch in the ears, one at each side of the head, preferably. <laughs> so you can see just just how gentle and curvy and uh, and appealing that face is and, uh, on the bottom right there. And it's just a sketch. And then look at the way he's put that in. Um, all that remains is to add head of hair and erase your guidelines. Notice again that the eyelashes are a solid mass. And that's a really important thing. They go on after this. And this is uh, facial expressions. Again, this is something that you can't really learn from a book. This is something that you are just going to keep on having a practice at. But um, the faces on these pages were all constructed exactly like the one you've just been studying. Notice how John is able to change the expression as often as he likes simply by making slight alterations in the mouth, the eyes and the eyebrows. Each expression is obvious, each expression is different and each expression can be mastered by you if you'll merely study them carefully and follow these few simple tips. Keep your female faces simple. That took me a long time to work out. Use no extra expression lines on the forehead, around the mouth or nose. We repeat, you don't need a lot of lines to show expression or to change an expression. Keep it clean and open. Study your face in the mirror. This is stuff that I, you know, I've been saying for a long time. Practice making different expressions yourself and see what happens to your face. Most artists are their own best models. Go virtually the same rules apply to male faces as to female faces regarding expressions. So never forget, once you learn the basic rules, it's fun to change them up with your own versions. So just the, the expressions on these faces, so obvious. It, it, it is such as these faces are so simple and yet they're elegant and they're showing you so many different emotions. Um, but how about a little variety? Suppose we want to draw a more sophisticated type of older woman. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's probably more up my street, an older woman. But you, you can see the way that he's applying different, um, just up using the basics, using those basic elements of how to draw a head and then a face and then a female face and then adding these extra bits to it. Let's say the story calls for a sophisticated villainous type. OK, we make the jawline a bit more angular and then give the eyebrows uh, more of an arch. Also, let's raise the outside corners. Now for a somewhat older woman. So what, what he's done here is he's literally just put a bit more jowl underneath and suddenly uh, a, an attractive older woman is uh, an attractive, you know, woman is now an attractive older woman. And, and it's just these simple additions, these simple amends that uh, that he's, he's, he's gone through and done. It, it, it really makes a difference. And when you're drawing comic books, and you want to keep those panels as simple as possible because as soon as you start adding lines to a face, you add age to a face. But you still want to be able to create character and mood and, and uh, emotion from those faces. So this is this book is just so damn fantastic. And John John Buscema is just so good at what he does. I mean, look at those faces. They are utterly gorgeous. Um, there's a few uh, examples there from uh, actual panels. All of them beautiful in their own way. Very simple though. I mean, you can see that all of those faces are incredibly simple. And these faces that he's finished off with are incredibly simple. I do have some examples of facial elements. Um, here we go. So I did some noses uh, for Draw the Marvel Way. And, and it's just, you know, coming up with different types of nose. There's so many different ones. I mean, I've got, got these here. And they also help with you characterizing your uh, your figures, characterizing your characters, you know, giving them the the essence of what they are, uh, which is pretty much like I was doing with those um, faces that we, we drew earlier. It, it, you know, just by changing shapes of basic elements, it's amazing what you can do with your characterization of faces. Uh, and then there's like things like this, which is literally just positions. We looked at that earlier on where you had the um, uh, the, the, the physical, um, not the physical, the, the geometric shapes for the, the, the basis of a head and, and how that changes as you look at it from different angles. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, just a simple face. Um, this is Storm. But again, look at how very simple I've, I've put a few lines on there i've got some shade lines in uh just around her eyes there and on her cheeks but it's very very small 
uh, small amounts, very small amounts indeed. And, and it creates a, a, a flow, it creates a gentle feminine face, if that's what you're looking to produce, obviously, it's, it's all down to what you're actually after. So um, this is a, a great chapter. I mean, I've, I've whipped through it, shown you some examples and samples of my own work um, and whipped through the, the chapter itself. It, it definitely requires you to go back and read it, reread it and do your own practice. Practice, practice, practice. That's, that's what you need to do. Um, on the next video, we'll be doing this chapter nine, which is composition. So this is really starting to get uh, into the comic book st uh, side of things. That is just such a stunning image from John Buscema. Beautiful pencils as ever. So we'll be getting into that in the next chapter. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one um, and that my examples have been of some help. Like I say, buy the book, read the chapter, read the whole book, read this chapter and, and soak yourself in it um, and take it in in the round. Yeah, uh, it's not the only way to draw comics. It's not the way to draw comics, but it is a great way to draw dynamic, fun comics that sit within that whole adventure superhero americana kind of thing if that's what you're after if that's the kind of book you want to produce this is the book you need in order to make sure that you can draw the way that you want to draw and i'm not talking about copying john boosman's style or anything like that just the essence of the of the drama and uh energy that uh, john and and the other uh, bronze age artists brought to their work so thanks very much for joining me for this video i'll be back again soon with chapter nine um if you're already a subscriber thank you so much thank you so much for being a subscriber if you're not why not subscribe and um obviously hit the bell uh, so that you can get uh notified of when the next videos are up more videos are incoming i'm going to be doing a vlog uh about uh, my own book and other bits and pieces um as well as obviously um any other uh artwork uh videos that i'll be putting up and more of these uh you can find me over at rustleach.com over at comicbookblackbelt.com uh, my book uh, only death can save us.com there's an email uh there's an email subscription list uh, on all of those uh, places uh, and in the description for this video please sign up so that I can keep you informed about the book it's on its way um, also over at Twitter uh, Instagram and Facebook find me always happy to chat about artwork leave a comment chat about uh, artwork comics in general in the comments so um, thanks for joining me today in the dojo for this chapter and i'll be back again with another video real soon bye bye thanks for watching comic book black belt if you've enjoyed the content from this video please like share or subscribe and come over and follow me on twitter it's been great having you in the dojo see you again soon